Then we go on to the very fascinating area, generally, when we progress as a medium, into what we call the metaphysical. Or you could label it the, the spiritual universe. So it's the physical matter of the spiritual universe. So as I've described, every single... Remember, every sphere that I've mentioned is actually a universe in itself. It's a dimensional space. It has physical matter in it. And those, that physical matter is able to be investigated when you are, and particularly when you are a spirit. So it's very, very easy again for any spirit in any location of the spirit world from the first sphere upwards to actually involve himself in metaphysical investigation and therefore transmit those truths through a medium to, to the earth. This area becomes very fascinating for us on earth because we start understanding a wide variety of things in the spirit world that are occurring. But the problem is that it's only dependent upon the condition of the spirit who's presenting the information to you. So if that spirit exists in the first sphere and he's never ever existed in any other sphere of the spirit world, he will present a life to you which may even mirror or very closely resemble the life that you might experience here on earth. How many of you uh, have read Life in the World Unseen? Uh, it's a quite a good channeling, it's on the CDs. Um, it's really worth reading. But again, channeled by a spirit who is existing in the first sphere. And many of you have read uh, the one that I sent out recently uh, by um, Jane Sherwood, Postmortem Journal. Did many of you have a read of that? All right. That is D.H. Lawrence, so Lawrence of Arabia's experience in the spirit world and passing. But when he gets right to the end and he's explaining about reincarnation and explaining about all these spiritual concepts, he's actually explaining them from a first sphere perspective. Now, you wouldn't know that, would you, reading it initially? You think, wow, this is pretty good information and it feels resonant because obviously there will be spirits with you who feel resonant with it as well. You'll get little tingly things as you're reading and that's the little tingles from spirit world. You know, when they're telling you, yeah, I agree with this and I agree with that. And you're thinking, yeah, this is sounding pretty good. Right? But in reality, the material is from that first and second sphere location in the spirit world. And almost all channeling that exists on earth today has come from those two locations, the first or second sphere. There is very little channeling that has come from spheres higher than those two locations. And the reason why is that there are very few mediums on earth who are developed enough to receive information of a higher degree of love than those locations. So the metaphysical, again, very fascinating area that we can receive lots of information about as a medium. But again, it can be highly distorted when it comes to truth because it's to do with the scientific investigation and the scientific investigation is usually one of experimentation. It's not one of knowing for sure. And you can see this on the earth too, can't you? Like years and years and years ago, right in the dark ages, they thought that the sun revolved around the earth, didn't they? And from the earth's perspective, that's exactly what it looked like, doesn't it? Right? But then when they start investigating the planets and the relationship with the planets to the sun, then they started realizing, and this is how, you know, the first telescopes helped in this process of realising, oh, hang on a second, no, the actual Earth revolves around the Sun. Now, there was a huge outcry when they came out. The man who actually, who was it? It was um, Galileo. Galileo. Was put, in, was put in prison by the Catholic Church uh, because of his findings. And he stayed in prison for many years as a result. All right. So, so why, why was that? Because man wouldn't accept what seemed to be the most logical thing. So, now if I had passed as a spirit, obviously I can investigate that far more thoroughly, can't I? And I can see whether that was the truth or not. And I can present that truth to the earth through a medium who's versed in it. But how does it help people on earth? It really only helps them understand science, doesn't it? It doesn't really help them understand anything about themselves anything about love, anything about developing the soul, anything about growing infinitely 
anything about the spirit world and their progression, the law of attraction, the law of compensation, the law of desire, any of those things, none of those things are even discussed in that entire process, are they? So how, how important is this information really in the end? For our soul, it's not very, not very much importance. It can be a sidetrack. In fact, yeah, most of the time it is a sidetrack. A sidetrack, something that is sidetracking our soul's development. 